Good evening all again welcome welcome to the session on anatomy and an academy youtube channel the session the topic of the session is the bursas of the human body as discussed yesterday about the tendinous sea sheaths today we are going to continue from there into the bursas of the human body i am dr ankit khandelwal mbbs ms anatomy anatomy educator in an academy platform let's proceed with the session few details about the calendar for the march for the test over here so in the month of march all these an academy tests plus subscriptions iconic benefits these are all about toppers special class features offers are going on for every uh, subscription of 3 months to 3 years you get some extra months mission iicd 2022 batch these are all the various batches this is neat p 2022 high yield mcq marathon batch fmg 2022 batch neat pg educator revision, revision batch all the educators are going to come over here and help in uh, help in revision subscription you can see the prices for the plus and the iconic iconic remember you have an academy as well as prep ladder both clear let's come to the topic the topic as you can see the bursas of the human body let's start a very interesting topic so first of all we should know that what we are dealing what is a bursa bursa is what it is a closed sac it is a closed sac which is lined by a synovial membrane from inside which secretes a synovial fluid so actually actually it is something which re will reduce the friction it's going to reduce the friction right so it is an enclosed sac over here it's an enclosed sac and which has a synovial fluid inside it synovial fluid inside it right so it is there it is the main purpose of this bursa is to reduce the friction that remember this point it is to reduce the friction that is the main purpose of this topic so now that is the anatomy now let's go to the functional part anatomically where do you think you should see a bursa so if you look over here in the entire body and just think for a second the entire body is made up of head neck the trunk and the appendages head neck the trunk and the appendages appendages head neck and the trunk are essential for life all the important organs are over here only in the head neck and the trunk the appendages are for locomotion and doing any activity so where is the movement the movement is occurring where movement is occurring in the appendages as we can obviously and understand that the movement occurs in the appendages okay so movement occurs so you can see here, right now i am writing on the board so my shoulder is moving my elbows are moving so movement okay and i am walking also here and there so my lower limb is also moving so what are the various major joints in these appendages as we know that the upper limb the major joints over here are our shoulder and the elbow right and the lower limb we have the hip and the knee hip and the knee well there are others also like the wrist and the ankle in upper and lower limb but yesterday we have seen how the tendinous sheaths they are present in the around the wrist and around the ankle so, so at those places they are taking care but now look at the long and the bigger muscles which will be having thicker and stronger tendons they will be passing around the shoulder joint around the hip joint knee joint elbow joint so there they make versa now that is the location so upper upper appendages are mainly made for movement so the muscles and mainly the tendons are passing through these joints now the tendons may rub against the bone so at those places where you need where you are, the body is at risk of uh, increased friction to the tendons the body has placed a defense mechanism or a, you can say a safety mechanism in the form of bursas so bursas are placed where the long ten, the strong tendons are passing against the bones or the ligaments there you have a bursa therefore the bursas in our human body will be mainly found in these four areas shoulder elbow hip and knee got the point so appendages they move and these are the major joints let's see now let's go one by one what are the various bursas that we we see around the shoulder around the shoulder shoulder joint shoulder means a shoulder joint elbow means elbow joint hip and knee are the joints how many bursas are there in the shoulder important ones let us first elaborate them number one one of the largest bursas in the body is a subacromial bursa also known as sub deltoid sub deltoid sub acromial bursa sub acromial bursa remember where it is located it is below the deltoid below the acromion simple simple is that it is below the deltoid below the ac acromion so deltoid is a muscle which is present which is arising from the clavicle the acromion in the spinous process so it is goes around like this inserts into the middle of the lateral part of the humerus in the deltoid tuber tubercle over here the deltoid is overlying all the muscles so bursa lies behind it that is a sub deltoid sub acromion bursa very big bursa very important bursa other bursas over here in the shoulder area is a sub scapularis bursa or sub scapular bursa so as the name suggests it is present between the tendon of the sub scapularis and the area around the 
shoulder joint. Shoulder joint, mainly we know all the capsules over there. The subscapular even forms a rotator cuff. So the, where the tendon of it comes and forms a merges with the capsule, there's a small bursa known as subscapularis bursa. Subscapularis, we can write over here. Bursa is there. The third bursa over here is a is a is, is a through the infraspinatus muscle. Where the infraspinatus muscle, when the scapula goes and joins the rotator cuff, there is an infraspinatus bursa. Infraspinatus bursa. And the fourth bursa over here is due to a, a tendon that passes from within the joint. That is our long head of biceps brachii tendon. Once it comes from inside the joint, as it comes out from the joint, see this muscle starts inside the capsule of joint. Tendon will start from there. Then when the tendon will come out of the joint, it will take through it the synovial membrane of the shoulder joint. Therefore, around the long head of trice, long head of biceps, long head of biceps tendon, when it, when it comes out of the joint, it takes a sheath over there that is our small bursa over here. So these are the main bursas of the shoulder. Now understand their important parts. Subdeltoid subacrural bursa, you may have heard of it a lot of times. That bursitis, inflammation over here, yes. The inflammation over here, the bursa is known as a bursitis. Understand this. So it is a very common bursitis of subdeltoid subacromial. The reason being it, the reason being that it is a, one of the bigger bursas, and beneath this lies the supraspinatus muscle, and all the movements are occurring over there. And supraspinatus muscle has a decreased vascular supply. So that supraspinatus tendonitis may lead to this bursitis. And the important sign over here is a Dobbins sign. Which sign? D A W B A R N apostrophe S. Dobbins sign. What is that? When the when the arm is hanging around the side, then if there is a subacromial bursitis in a particular patient, you can palpate it below the acromion, and you if you do a deep palpation, the patient may tell you about the pain. He may your pain may be elicited. But once there is a 90 degree abduction, then this bursa, whether it is inflamed or not. It goes underneath the acromion. So if now you place a finger at the same position, now the pain is gone because the bursa has slided inside or deep to the acromion process. So that is known as a Dobbin sign. It is for the subacromion bursitis, right? Second is the subscapular bursa. The subscapular is bursa. Now the main feature of this bursa is that this bursa, this bursa, and the second one is the bursa from the long head of biceps brachii tendon. These are the two bursas which have direct communication with inside the shoulder joint. I mean, this makes a common sense. It is coming from inside the joint, so it will definitely make. So they have a direct communication. This is a direct communication. And remember, this subscapulus also has a direct communication. While well, what about these? They normally don't have. But around 5-10% of cases, they may also have some direct, direct communication with the inside the shoulder joint. So these are the four bursas around the shoulder. The largest bursite is very common. And some having direct communications. So I'm not having right communications. Come to the elbow part. If you look at the bursas around the elbow, elbow, the main area where you will get bursas are where the bi biceps and triceps are getting attached. Because you know where, where does the triceps attach? The triceps attach to the olecranon process. So remember over here, I just write T for here, triceps, it attached to the olecranon process. And the biceps will go where? Biceps, the two head of bi biceps, they'll come down, they'll go to the radial tuberosity. So the radius over here, the radial tuberosity. Now these are strong muscles, major muscles of the anterior and posterior part of the arm. So they have strong tendons. Now their tendons are going very close to the elbow joint. So therefore when I am moving my elbow, obviously from inside, there is my tendons are moving and tendons are very close to the capsule of my elbow joint. Agreed or not? Therefore we need a bursa over here. So remember, where the triceps attaches, there are two bursas, one above and below. So there are two bursas over here, where the triceps attach to the lucron process, one above and below. And same happens for the biceps also, where the biceps attaches, there are two bursa over here. Small bursas, but yeah, they are there. Two bursas, two. So total four bursas around the elbow also. And remember the student's elbow. The student's elbow. So when a student is lying prone and uh, reading all the time on the bed, elbows are touching the surface, he may develop bursitis. Which bursitis? This olecranon process bursitis. And which one of the two? The lower, the lower bursa. Out of these two, the student's elbow. The student's elbow. So there are four in the elbow and four in the shoulder. Let's come to the low limb part. Low limb, hip and knee, remember? Hip and knee. So start with the hip joint. What are the various bursas around the hip joint? Bursas around the hip joint. Now, <clears throat> the major bursas around the, around the hip joint are divided into two major categories. What are those categories? One major category is that they are below the gluteal muscles, subgluteal muscles. And the other category is that they are beneath the, the muscle which forms the posterior abdominal wall. 
सुस मेजर मसल सो दे आर अराउंड ट्रैक्ट But again, a significant part of it will go to the gluteal to prostate. That is again in the upper end of femur. So the my point is the tendons are close to the joint of these muscles. So they will have a bursa. Right. Let's start with this one only. Swas bursa. Swas bursa. Remember, swas bursa. If they ask you any questions, that we know about the anatomy of the hip joint. That hip joint is a quite a stable joint, and it is stabilized by mainly the femoral ligaments. Which femoral ligaments? Ilio femorals. The pubo femorals. So anteriorly we have ilio. femoral and a pubic femoral ligament i mean we all should be knowing the ilio is a one of the strongest ligaments so space between them between the ilio and the pubic femoral ligaments space between them gives attachment to the swas bursa inside the hip joint so in majority of the cases this may communicate with the inside of the hip joint and the location is between the ilio femoral ligament and the pubic femoral ligament remember this part from the swas bursa okay so swas bursitis Remember the questions of cold abscess, a pots of spine, cold abscess from there may percolate through the swas fascia, and then may go down around the lesser trochanter. Now, if it has, if it has a direct and a big communication, that may lead lead to hip joint arthritis. So, cold abscess in the pot or the pots of spine may lead to hip joint arthritis. May lead to not very common, but yeah, chances are there. Theoretically, there are chances. Now, let's come to the sub subgluteal. So, in subgluteal, we should know that the in the hip bone, on the outer part of the you can say the Whole iliac surface, or the L of the ilium, on the outer part, lateral part, we have the gluteal surface where the three gluteal muscles are attached: minimus, medius, and maximus. So, as the minimus and medius they go to the greater trochanter, there are bursas. One bursa is for the gluteus minimus as it goes to the greater trochanter. Second bursa is for the gluteus medius as it again goes to the greater trochanter. Third, third muscle is our gluteus maximus. Now, gluteus maximus is a huge muscle. It's a huge muscle. So it has more than one bursa. Let us see the bursa around the gluteus maximus. They are not one; they are more than one. Now, how many bursa are there? Let us see. Let us see how many bursa are there around the gluteus maximus. One is where the muscle will take origin from the posterior part of the of the you can say the gluteal surface around the uh, you can say the PSIS posterior superior ilic iliac spine around the outer lip of iliac crest. The gluteus maximus takes origin. So first bursa is where the muscle takes origin. Between the posterior at the posterior border of the ilium, posterior border of the ilium. So uh, location over there, it has a bursa. See the point is, you may ask as a muscle is taking origin, why it has a bursa? See, once the muscle is takes origin, yes, you are good that why would there be a bursa? But the reason is the muscle does not only take origin from the ilium, but even the sacrum behind and the sacrotuberous ligament, this gluteus maximus is going to take origin. So it is as it crosses the border of the ilium, it has a small bursa. <coughs> so at that point, second point is. muscle is huge and all the gluteal surface what we study is under the gluteus maximus so if i ask you that when we sit on a hard surface which part of the bone is touching the surface your answer should be from the first three days the ischial tuberosity so obviously there is a small bursa when the maximus muscle goes around the ischial tuberosity second bursa over there now let's see third one third one obviously where this muscle where this muscle is going to attach onto the bone femur So gluteal tuberosity so at the level of the gluteal tuberosity again there will be a bursa, again there will be a bursa and gluteal tuberosity is actually present posteriorly. It's the upper lateral continuation of the linea aspera. Now at that part near to it there is a vastus lateralis origin also. So there is a fourth a very small bursa between the maximus and the vastus lateralis. Now these are all the major bursa of the maximus only. So remember sub gluteal bursa they were actually. For the minimus and medius, one of the bursa is around the lesser trochanter. Sorry, greater trochanter because they are going to greater trochanter. The swas goes to the lesser trochanter. Only one one for minimus and medius, because you can see a lot of for the gluteus maximus. So that was about that was about the hip joint. Let's come to the largest joint in the body, that is the hip joint. So as I said initially, largest joint. So it should be clear that it would be having more than one bursa, and yes, it does have. Knee joint is a modified hinge joint. Major action is flexion extension, and some amount of rotation is also there due to due to the bicondylar variety of the joint. 
two quantiles of the femur, two quantiles of the tibia. Let us see how many bursas are there because there are more than one bursas obviously. There are many bursas, we will just count, we will add them at the, at the end how many bursas are there. Let us start with the anterior part. In the, if you look at the anterior part of the knee, anterior part of the knee, then anteriorly what happens is there is a femur and the tibia but if I draw like this over here, that's a femur and a tibia over here, the anterior part and the posterior part. There is a bone over here, which I hope all of you will recognize it as a patella, like patella over here. Now see what happens is, there is a muscles which are coming from here and they will form the patella ligament which will go onto the upper part of tibia. Where are the bursas? Bursas are over here, one over here, one is over here, known as suprapatellar which is communicating with the cavity of the knee joint. So we have anteriorly, we have a suprapatellar bursa, suprapatellar bursa that communicates a direct, com direct communication with the with the cavity of the knee joint. Okay, so suprapatellar bursa, that is number one. A, B over here, housemaid's knee and clergyman's knee, remember these two, housemaid's knee and clergyman's knee. Housemaid's knee is over here, pre-patellar bursa, there is a, that is outside there is a skin. This is what I am trying to make is a patellar ligament. So housemaid's knee is for the pre-patellar bursa. Pre-patellar bursa. Then there are two inferior bursas. One is a superficial one, one is a deeper one. Superficial and deep to the patellar ligament. So the outer one, the superficial is known as the infrapatellar bursa. Or you can say infrapatellar over here and one over here would be the deeper. Deep infrapatellar bursa. So these are the bursas which are only on the anterior aspect of the knee joint. Four bursas. The important one clinically are the suprapatellars, the prepatellars, and this we have the name of disease, the housemaid's knee, the clergyman's knee, and suprapatellar is diet communication. So even in um, doing any surgery from inside the knee joint, then obviously you have to take care of this bursa. So you may have to remove this bursa at times, because obviously it is having a diet communication with the knee joint. So remember that part. Now these are the place and tail. Let us see more. If if we start to see more, then if we see at the posterior aspect of the knee joint. Posterior aspect of the knee joint, if I ask you which muscle is present on the posterior aspect of the knee joint that takes origin from there and then goes below into the leg, which is that muscle and which assist in flexion of the knee joint? The answer is the two heads of gastrocnemius. So therefore, for two heads of the gastrocnemius, two heads of the gastrocnemius, you have two bursas, one for the medial head one for the lateral head of gastrocnemius. You have two bursas present posteriorly. I am writing two over here and let me write four over here. So we can count in the end. Four over here and two over here. Remember, now here the clinical important one is this medial one. Because from here a continuation from the medial head of gastrocnemius, the bursa from the medial head of gastrocnemius, there is con a continuation from this to the semi-membranosus to the semi-membranosus and this may easily get inflamed because many times this also may have a communication with inside of the knee joint and remember for uh, some of you may have heard of a Baker cyst B-A-K-E-R apostrophe S this is that Baker cyst the gastrocnemius semi-membranous bursa if that gets inflamed you can palpate it on the posterior part of the knee joint that is in the popliteal fossa Baker cyst of what which bursa is Baker cyst Gastronemia semimembranosus. So, gastronemia semimembranosus. GCSM. GCSM is a Baker's. So, posterior there were two. Now, let us see more. Yes, there are more. Let us see medial, medially. What is present medially? Medially, if you guys remember, then there were three tendons that go and insert into the upper part of the medial surface of the tibia. Passensorine. Passensorine. So, there were three tendons of the passensorine. There was semitendinosus, the gracilis and sartorius, sartorius. So when they attach onto the tibia, obviously these three tendons are attaching onto the upper part of the medial surface of tibia, there has to be a bursa. So yes, there is a bursa for this passensorine, passensorine. Then, then what happens is, there is a muscle which is going, which is uh, a muscle which is in the, present in the hamstring, but quite the deeper, that goes medially and whose continuation is oblique popliteal ligament. That muscle is semimembranosus, semimembranosus, right? And as it goes and attaches, there are two bursas, very small bursas along with the semimembranosus. So third one also comes over here. One medial to it, one lateral to it. So there is a bursa between semimembranosus and the tibial collateral ligament. And there is a bursa between the this, uh, muscle tendon and the bone, which bone? The tibia bone. So there are three bursas. So medially there are three bursas. This we are coming to end, don't worry. 
Finally, finally, last we go to the lateral aspect of the knee joint. Remember, knee joint was the largest joint, so you have to be a little bit patient over here. Laterally, what happens is now let us let us see your image over here and imagine the femur and the tibia and a small fibula over here. Let's try to imagine the stuff over here. Fibula, so it is a lateral side, that is a medial side. Clear? Now here, if I try to make the fibular collateral and the tibial collateral ligament, clear? Let us change the color to some other. Let us use the green color for the uh, beautiful tendons over here. I guess that will be better. So see what happens on the lateral side. You have this tendon that is coming, which attaches over here, biceps femoris. Biceps what? Biceps femoris. And which is the intracapsular tendon? In the knee joint, that is the popliteus. So there you have this popliteus over here. Which muscle? Popliteus tendon is lying inside. Popliteus over there. Now let us look at the bursas. Obviously, when the tendon is coming, there has to be bursa, number one over here. Between biceps femoris and the fibular collateral ligament. Where is fibular collateral? This blue, light blue is the fibular collateral. Then as the popliteus is inside, there will be two bursas around it. Second and third. So, laterally also you have three bursas. One is dedicated to the biceps femoris muscle and the two are dedicated. Two are dedicated to the popliteus tendon. Because a, you have the capsule also no, over here. And the bones also over here. So there are two bursas around the popliteus. Theoretically. Theoretically. So there are three present laterally. Three present medially. So three medially. Three laterally. Three plus three is uh, six. Six plus posterior you have two. Six plus two is eight. Anteriorly we had four. So eight plus four is. Theoretically there are twelve bursas. But the important clinical important ones. Let me highlight them. Supra patellar pre infra patellar clergyman's knee for the infra. If you look at the posterior aspect, GCSM, gastrocnemius semiembrunosus for the medial. Which part of gastrocnemius? Medial part, Baker cyst. Posterior, remember this. For the medial aspect, medial aspect, pes sensorine bursa, their bursitis are common. Pes sensorine bursa, their bursitis are common. Try to remember this. Then laterally, laterally, you can go with this biceps humoris, that may be important. So these were the important bursa of the knee, hip, uh, sorry, knee joint. When you come to the hip joint, remember, gluteus maximus are quite a big muscle over here. And you can see theoretically around four bursas are over here. And look at the gluteus minimus medius and the bursas. Now what happens is, trochanteric bursitis is what is given the name when there is a greater trochanter pain over there. If you ask the patient to lie in a lateral position, lie down in a lateral position, and you on the, on the suppose the right side he is having a pain, right hip is having the pain. And you ask the patient to lie on the left little position so that the right hip is present at a upper a superior level than the left. Left hip is touching the bed over there, right? So he's having pain on the right side. Now how you have to palpate the greater trochanter. How to palpate it? It is the most projecting part laterally. So if you can palpate the iliac crest that we can palpate in all, and then you go below, keep on palpating, the next bony surface is the greater trochanter. Now if you do, do a deep palpation, the patient will tell you of pain. If the patient is not telling you of pain, Ask the patient to lift the, if the right hip is having the pain, ask the patient to lift the right lower limb upward, superiorly, against the gravity. You may put some pressure also. What will happen is, when the patient is lying in a left lateral position, and he is taking the right lower limb upward, he is actually doing abduction of the right hip joint. Abduction are done by these two muscles. So basically you are asking him, you are making him to contract these muscles. Obviously the pain will elicit, because these muscle tendons are inserted over here. These are how you are going to take care of the trochanteric bursitis. Trochanteric bursitis is what is this is called as. Right? So as I already told you, it has a direct communication. Or the spine may reach the hip joint. And obviously in the elbow, elbow part or lacron bursa, I told you that is important for the student's elbow. In the shoulder, subdeltoids are acromion bursa, one of the largest bursas, dob on sign. Subscapulis bursa, direct communications also with the long head of biceps. Long head of biceps, remember. It goes to the intertubercular groove. Okay, so over there, right? So these, this were about, this was about our bursas of the human body, bursas of the human body, right? So I repeat again, the bursas. You should know first of all about the body that what are the appendages, which structures are moving more. So tendons over there, they need some protection against the hard bones in the ligament. They record the bursa. That's as simple as that. So remember the anatomy of the bursa basic, so that you may diagnose the bursitis. And what do you do in bursitis? Nothing simple, rest and steroids may begin. If something pain is too much, then you may think of surgery. Okay, so that's all from my side, guys. I hope you enjoyed the session. We'll meet tomorrow with a new topic at 7.30 p.m. Thank you for your time. All the best.